connected to that source, the source of I used to know the names of all the stars. They were born creative. They were born knowing it all. Whereas Picasso said, uh, you know, we're all born as artists, and the challenge is to remain one as one grows up. Um, and now you know why I do Kid Pan Alley. You know, it's uh, this late in life and working this hard, it's really uh, to remain an artist, and the kids keep me one. Yeah, how do we remain artists? And why does there seem to be an inverse relationship between the quality of the songs and the age of the kids after about fifth grade? Which is why I didn't want to write a song with you guys tonight. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So you'd be sitting there arguing, is that a the or an and? <laughs> Whereas a five-year-old might say, oh, the wind blew me a pony. Or a bunch of first graders wrote, if everything were a rose, life would be so sweet. Butterflies would bloom and the birds would tweet. Yes, if everything were a rose, every child would grow into just what they want to be. If everything were a rose, I would be me. Mm -hmm. First graders, mm -hmm. wonder, you know, and why do we lose that wonder? What happens to it? Uh, is it our self-consciousness as we grow older? Is it our uh, too many hours of listening to not very good radio? That's part of it. Uh, or is it that we're discouraged from doing creative work by our parents or an, kind of an unaware teacher who says something like, uh, oh, why don't you do something worthwhile? Mm -hmm. And we all have our stories. I'm sure every one of you <coughs> has that. And I have mine. Um, my composition teacher in college went to college to study music and composition, and he goes, why are you doing this? You're never going to do anything in music. You're wasting your time and mine. <laughs> and he was probably right at the time. I was a guitar player. I, all I knew was folk music, and I didn't know anything about music. Uh, but he forgot about one thing, and that one thing he forgot about is desire. You know, if we really want to do something, eventually we learn. I always wanted to swim in that ocean of music, and I worked real hard for it. And then I also think, maybe I just did it to piss him off a bit. <laughs> um, I took great delight in sending him every new album I made, which uh, <laughs> by the time he passed away, it was about, oh, two or three dozen albums. Uh, it was really sad. He had... Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I wrote a full-length piece for orchestra and narrator that premiered over at the Mazels, and uh, it was really sad that he never got to hear it, because I could have never done it had he not taught me what he did about music. Uh, so I was very grateful for that. Um, yeah, and why do we, why do the songs get worse? Why do they? Is it our educational system? Uh, Ken Robinson said a really interesting thing. He's, you know, I feel like the creativity often gets sucked right out of us. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Robinson said, uh, it gets sucked out of us by the conformity of standardized testing that has created a fast food model of education mm -hmm. that depletes the educational system in the same way that fast food depletes our bodies. Yeah, you know, would you like fries with your answer there? <coughs> um, it's the linear and the uniformity uh, that are the enemy of creativity uh, and also of the ambiguity that makes prose into poetry, as Leonard Bernstein says. So what is it we can do to reinvigorate creativity as a core value in our educational system? You know, we live in, an ev in a creative economy, and everybody talks about the creative economy, and yet there's so little that trains kids to be creative. Can we change that system, or is it... Uh, is educational reform, as uh, Noam Chomsky said, merely a euphemism for the destruction of public education. For me, it's just the little things we can do with kids you know, so that we can help them discover their own creative voice. I do it through Kid Pan Alley. Uh, I look at Kid Pan Alley as a creativity in a community building program dressed up in the scruffy clothes and beard of uh, songwriting. But it is. It's about creativity. Songwriting is just the vehicle for it. Uh, I'm devoted to it because I think the most important thing we can do for our children is to encourage them 
And I also do it for my own selfish reasons, which is, uh, you know, what better way than to have fun than to hang around with, you know, third graders all day <laughs> writing crazy songs. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so I really, really enjoy it. Because we're just hanging out there, hanging over the edge, uh, making stuff up in the moment. I bristle when people say you can't teach creativity, as if creativity is something only certain people are born with. Because we're all born with it. You know, how did those kids write that song? They were born with it. We don't teach it, we encourage it. We inspire it. We help uncover it in the children and in each other. So as uh, fourth graders, I just uh, did a residency with uh, the American Visionary Museum in Baltimore this week. And the fourth graders there wrote, uh, I can be whatever I want to be because I'm a work of art. A giraffe, a zebra, a dove for peace, I'll follow my own heart, create my future, pave my road, go anywhere I want to go. I can be whatever I want to be because I'm a work of art. Yeah. Yeah. So that, uh, that song was finished on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, at Kid Pen Alley, we try and uh, honor the kids' work by realizing it at the highest creative level. So. Uh, not the level where, you know, you might take your kid's painting and hang it on the wall or hang it on the refrigerator with magnets and say, oh, Johnny, that's really good for a second grader. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. <laughs> but no, at the highest level, we record each concert and make CDs of them. And uh, every now and then, we make an album with uh, featuring really well-known, amazing artists like Amy Grant, Delbert McClinton, Sissy Spacek, uh, Kix Brooks of Brooks and Dunn. Sometimes we record them with orchestras. Uh, but we try and do it to the highest professional level so the kids <laughs> recognize that their work has that level of value and that people will do it. And just think of, you know, what it's like. Uh, you know, you're eight years old and the first song you ever wrote got recorded by one of them and then got nominated for a Grammy, which happened for some of our kids in Nashville. <laughs> Grammy nomination at eight. <laughs> 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 So, and I'm in it for the wonder, because, you know, I walk in on a Monday morning and I say, we've got two concerts on Friday, and we have no idea what we are going to do. <laughs> so we better get to work. And uh, magically, by the end of the week, there are eight new songs. And wondrously, you know, I've learned to trust that whisper. <laughs> Leaf of every tree. Now it's just the forest and the dusk beneath. I used to see the God in every day. Now it's just a rustling, a whisper that I'm trusting when the red bud blossoms in the spring. Now I have to go to sleep, learn it all again, let my dream and take me to the place where it began. When I used to know the names of all the stars. to uh, how to remain an artist <coughs> lies in our dreaming and in our listening. We work in all kinds of situations with Kid Pan Alley in schools and in summer programs, with senior citizens, museums, silent film festivals, and each one calls for a different kind of listening. We even started working with nonverbal children with uh, profound autism. In fact, one of my friends who helped organize that, Stacy here, uh, with her school. And somehow, through a deeper kind of listening, uh, we learn how to write songs together. Another project we undertook about a year ago was working with uh, kids who were in transition from homelessness. We did this with the Corcoran Gallery of Art in Washington. We took these kids to the museum. None of them had ever been in a museum before. And uh, they wanted to write about this. There was this huge 30-foot tall metal sculpture of a heron stuck in the mud, wrapped in chains, and just held down. Mm. And I said to the kids, you know, well, what's this make you feel like? And one of the kids says, it makes me feel like I should never give up. Mm. 
because we always need to keep dreaming. And so we wrote this song, and I'm going to get uh, my friend Leah to come up and sing it with me. Leah works with me in King Pan Alley. And let's see what kids do. Must keep on trying to break free from the chains of time to always be free in our mind. We need no excuse for dreaming, we need no excuse to fly. Sometimes I get tangled in a life, I weave like a spider caught in its web. It's hard to escape, cut through the red tape, and get those nightmares out of my head. We need no excuse for dreaming, we need no excuse to fly. Even though we may get stuck, we must keep on trying. the clouds, go anywhere or do anything, float in midair, fly across the mountains, and just like the heron, I'll spread my wings, so I dream of singing my songs to the wind, that opens my heart once again. chains of time to always be free inside our mind we need no excuse for dreaming we need no excuse to fly we need no excuse for dreaming we need no excuse to fly We need no excuse for dreaming, uh, so go dream yourself a story, or a song, or a poem, and uh, send it to me. <laughs> right, right, so, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's the end of the talk part of this, but we <laughs> wanted to do a couple more songs, and uh, I'm going to bring Leah up. Uh, I'd like to share a few more of my songs with you. Uh, so Leah's going to come up and sing uh, a song that uh, is kind of my anthem about being creative. Uh, I wrote it uh, about a gentleman out in California uh, back in the early 80s uh, on our first trapezoid tour of California. Uh, our very first gig, we're uh, going to play in this place called Mariposa, California, way up in the Sierra Nevadas, and our agent gave us a map and everything, and we're driving. And we're going on, we're on a highway, and then we're on a two-lane road, and then we're on a dirt road, and then we're just going through a cow pasture. <laughs> but it still looks like the right. We didn't have GPS, and, but there were all these car hoods around that said, "Woody Guthrie or bust." <laughs> straight ahead, and feedback theater. Straight ahead, and we get to the end of the road, and there's nothing there. There's a gate across the road, and way off in the distance, it's getting dark at that point. We see this uh, light, and there's a path. We walk down the path, and all of a sudden, I look over to my left, and there gargoyles on every fence post. <laughs> <laughs> and then we come to a graveyard and all the tombstones say critics. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew we were in the right place. <laughs> and uh, so this was Bob DeWitt's house and uh, 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 Bob uh, 
was an artist and uh, used to, uh, he had a duo with Lord Buckley and when Lord Buckley would do his raps, Bob would do murals on the wall behind him and Bob's wife, Doey, worked with Will Rogers and mm -hmm. Bob answered everything, any question you asked uh, by doing something artistic. Mm -hmm. So if you asked him a question, he might throw you a pot or draw you a drawing or paint you a painting. One time we came back the next year and he had built Lake Trapezoid Aww. in response to our concert the year before, this big lake in the shape of a trapezoid with a picture of a hammer dulcimer right there. So uh, anyway, I was, uh, uh, so I wrote this song about, uh, about Bob, but it's really uh, about what I believe is our life as, uh, as creative artists. And Leah's going to sing that with me. Thank mm -hmm. you. 